Hello everyone. In tonight's video, we will see a fault that can occur in the power strip that we had analyzed the design of in the previous videos. We said that we would make some videos with faults, the most common faults that occur in power strips. I will start with this one here in the design. Now this specific fault is a dead power strip. It does nothing. But when we plug it in, it doesn't give us any output continuous. Therefore, I will do it on the spot. We will install a socket. And if you remember correctly, I had connected a bulb to the 12 volt output on this specific board, where we installed a socket and it does nothing. You see the bulb here, it's burnt out. And what will we do now? First thing we will do is to measure with our multimeter the 220 volts. If they come to the entrance, let's go for a measurement. And I measure directly at the entrance where the cable is. I measure here and see that I have 230 volts. So the voltage is coming to the network, probably coming from the network to the board. So the next measurement I will do is on the capacitors to see if the voltage passes and if it is rectified and stays here in the dents. So I go continuously and count on the dents to see what's going on here. We were supposed to find 310 volt, which we had said, you see here, it doesn't show anything. So what is the conclusion that I have some line cut, meaning I get 220 volt here. They don't go up to the two holes to be upright and in density or in safety. Let's see the plan a little to remember it, a little to see where we can measure. So we have measured the 220 volt here at this point. That 220 volt are coming to the decreasing. And I have checked and on the components here that I don't have a tendency. So let's be cautious here in between on some of these components that exist. From here to here, we have an issue. We basically have a burnt component or a cut circuit. So let's go and start fixing it. We said 220 volt, they pass through here like this, exactly like this. And they reach a varistor over there, one conductor, and the next one passes through the safety that is over here. This here is the safety, and it continues and goes to the other leg of the varistor. Let's also remember what a varistor is. We see it says 500 volt that it can withstand this. If the voltage exceeds 500 volt, it shorts. And there is the safety. This is the function of the varistor for us to protect from over voltage. So as we see it on the varistor, the legs that are visible, we need to measure 220 volts. Alternating to see it from above as a first measurement, if we have them. So here is the varistor. Here are the little legs that are visible and the fuse. So it must pass directly through here from the blowing 220 volt on the barrister. So I plug in the socket again. I plug in the alternating current and measure on the legs of the barrister. So I have zero V. Uh, what I infer from now on is that the only thing in between is the fuse. So it's probably the fuse that's blown. Uh, I unplug the socket and I will measure the fuse with the buzzer from below. Let's see if it's good while I put the buzzer and I check the safety. I am safety. I see it doesn't produce anything. The safety is definitely off. Now the easiest, of course, I would say I'm changing the fuse and I'm okay. It usually doesn't happen like this. To blow the fuse, I have another problem. Either there was an overload and the barrister has short-circuited or there are two burnt ones up here. I basically have a short circuit so that the fuse doesn't blow. I will replace the fuse and of course I won't connect it to the power. I will show you what other measurements we need to take before connecting it to the power. So I have replaced the fuse and I will measure with my tester at the entrance directly. You say that since the entrance short-circuited, now that the fuse has been changed. So what have we done here? 
we have a short circuit at the entrance directly. Here the fuse passes. Look at the short circuit, it's somewhere here. If I measure on the fuses above, I will also measure here to see if it's short circuiting and B here. It will prove the density not to count. I see it doesn't short circuit beyond me. So the short circuit is limited at the bottom as we see it down here in the diodes. That is they have here in these diodes here in the rectification. Or in the capacitors I have here that here is short-circuited, even the varistor, to see it a bit in the design again. So we said that a fuse has blown this one here, so we have a short circuit, and the short circuit will be either here in the varistor, or it will be where else we have a short circuit. It may happen, it can be done by these capacitors here, here, this capacitor, this one, those that are in parallel at the two ends of 220 volt. These are what we are looking to see. And the diodes, of course, this rectification here, and this here could also be a short circuit. The only thing that is not short circuited is here at the back. Here, the capacitors here, we don't find a short circuit. So we are limited to the toll boots over here from the denser ones. And below, we definitely do not have a short circuit. And because the most vulnerable components are the synthesis bridge or diodes. Namely, I will first measure the diodes to see what is happening. So I measure the first diode over here. And it shows me that the first diode is correct. I'll go to the second. Here I find short circuits. See this passage shortens. Let's continue to go to the other. This seed, good. And last, this also shows short circuit. Short circuit diodes shown here. Some diodes shorter. So now I'm gonna take them out of the circuit. I'll take them off, i.e. I'll count them off. Whether they are short circuit, I will indeed replace them. So here we are. Again, the two tolls were shorted. I have replaced, I will count again to see if short circuit continues. So I'll put the buzzer back at the entrance that was shortening me before, before. See now, not shorter. Here, as to put, it does not shorten it. So we have solved the problem. See also the, the varistor shortening, no shorter. So now I can check with the buzzer and continue that is not some track cut, I can count that phase. In neutral, go over to varistor. I see it right here, and I can Still counting 220 passes. Via yoga in the corridors, 1 i.e. the capital of 220. I will find it here. Here, here comes the dangling 220, and the other end the... I will find it in some other bike of the lanes over here, where it is down here. So one end goes to the upper lanes. And from there they are elevated to them themselves. The discussions that make the bridge are lifted and go to the Puganites from above. So if I count from the other side of the passages, I go to the denser ones above, the comparative density of the denser ones. Sit down to do it and see it all. On the left side of the passages are the 220, that is. And on their right side are on the comparative density of the denser ones, which are 310. See here, you see this is one end. And below, these diodes are now at the other end of the density. So it passes the voltage, the 220 are rectified and go to the capacitors. And if I measure at the MOSFET, if I have a short circuit, even though I won't have a short circuit since I didn't have it before on the capacitors, the MOSFET hasn't been damaged. So what do we do now? We plug in the socket, and if everything goes well, the light will turn on. So we see that the power supply is working now. Can't you see? So it was only the burnt one. Quite easy to grasp this because we create short circuits, but then we remove components until it shorts out. And we measure them, of course. It's very common to see this in power supplies, where the diode, the zener, the resistor burn out, 
and the barristers, of course, if they overvolted. Well, that was the repair. We will continue in other videos with other repairs, of course. This was the simplest one I could show you. Subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the upcoming videos. I'm looking forward to your comments. And good continuation to everyone. Hello.